Well, in fact, I was thinking <coughs> Ajahn Mahabua, and so I met Ajahn Paniwato in the chair then. And then uh, we taped uh, Ajahn Pat, who was very famous, you know, yeah. and uh, was the, uh, the king and queen teacher at the yeah. time. And then uh, went to uh, Lumpu Kao, and that's the one I really like. Because, I don't know, I, he, he gave me something that I still, you know, appreciate. Like, he, he was, uh, he was sitting in a wheelchair, he was very old, and, uh, and so, you know, they were, I was sitting at a distance from him, and, and Pachana and Ajahn Mahamon were there, and they, and they were taping his talk, and I didn't really pay much attention. <laughs> because my language wasn't very good, so uh, anyway, it was time to go, and, and Ajahn Chah and Ajahn Mahamon left, we're getting up and going, and then Numpu Kao said, money, money, he beckons to me, and he says, I can understand money, money, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> I said, come here, and so, <laughs> and so I go very close to him, and then he, he points to his chest, and he says, the truth is here, and it goes like this. And I thought that's just something that, you know, it was simple, you know, that high I could understand that much. But it was, it was profound, because it was coming from a pure, pure mind. So I was always, I was like him, and, and I, before I went to England, I went to see him in Udon, and he he was very old, and I heard, you know, he's about ready to die, really. So I thought, well, I, I, I don't want to bother him, you know. I'll just go and, and bow. That's enough. I'm not... So I went to what? Tam Klong Pen. Went there, and... Uh, the monks that would take it, looking after Numpu Kao, you know, I said, oh, look, I don't want to, I realize that his health isn't very good, he's probably resting, I just want to pay respect. And, and I'm willing to do it outside the room, I don't even have to, and but they insisted I go in. And so I went in, you know, there's a fairly dark room, and, uh, and I saw this kind of body lying on the mat, I kind of crawled over to it. It looked like a corpse, you know, huh. like a dead body. And and then uh, and then I say something, and then Lumpu Kao, who's emaciated, very thin, small, looked like a corpse, body very old, suddenly opens his eyes, and his eyes are just so bright. It's <laughs> 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 amazing. I'll never forget. You know. <laughs> Blue. Out of this corpse, Blue. corpse like, <laughs> <laughs> and he has always had a bright, bright character and, yeah. and very good humor. Mm. He gave me his blessing. Mm. I told him what I was going, planning to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she spoke to him on that occasion. Yeah, so yeah. Long, yeah. It was just before I, I went to England. Could you communicate, you could communicate with him in Thai. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he explained. Hmm. And Ajahn Fan, he was charismatic. Hmm. Uh, and uh, he, he had a kind of charisma about him. And he was very famous at the time. And I like to go just listen to him. Like I'd go stay at, at his monastery in, in Sukhumakon and then I'd just, you know, sit under with him in, in his kuti, you know, he'd be sitting down below and I'd just go there and then listen to him talk to 
to, you know, like he detract, he could teach all levels of Thai society, like the Queen of Thailand or uh, the aristocracy or a uh, Thai farmer, uh, you know, a shopkeeper. I mean, it just, it, it Dhamma just flowed out, you know. And and he didn't seem to care who who was you know about your status or social status, uh, and they, you got the same teaching. Everybody did, you know. They're just an illiterate farmer or Queen Sirikit. <laughs> <laughs> was very impressive, and then and then he gave me a Cuban cigar. He <laughs> smoked. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't smoke then, but I eventually did, because I thought, oh, this is, you know, it's 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 fun. It's fun. I hear this story from uh, when Lumpur Cha was in, uh, in New York, and the poor bride, they were driving them around. <laughs> Not to travel smoking, I say, yeah, far away from my popo. Go but my popo is not counting here. <laughs> yeah, when, he, when I went to Wat Ma the first time in 1967, every, everybody smoked. <coughs> and after the evening puja, They'd pass out five cigarettes to each monk. <laughs> <laughs> and so people were buying cigarettes, and then they they pass them, divide them up. So everybody got five each. And uh, but I didn't smoke, you see. So I give them to uh, the other monks. They it made me fairly popular, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And then Jack Cornfield came to spend the Pantha, and another, uh, he was, uh, Dr. Burns, he was an American uh, psychiatrist, and I think he worked for the American Embassy, And but he, he was fluent in Thai, and he also New Pali, and he's a Buddhist, and he, he's about the same age as, as I was, about 30, and so he was, <clears throat> he, he temporarily ordained, because he was married, and so he got permission from his wife, so Jack Cornfield and Dr. Burns, and myself, we spent Pantha with Rinpoche, and at that, and Wapapo, and, and that, Pansa, Agar and Cha, forbade smoking and chewing betel nut mm. to everybody. Mm. So, um, of course, the you know Dr. Burns and uh, and Jack Cornfield, the, the last he's seen, you know, was, was, you know, because they have the strong views about smoking and betel nut. So, uh, you know, they, they were kind of. Uh, Holding Ajahn Chah up is a great teacher because he's really, he sees the, you know, agrees with them. Mm. But then one day I was outside the gate of Wat Bapoma and I passed Ajahn Chah and he was smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> outside the gate. Outside the gate. <laughs> 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 like the like like late people sometimes. He's sneaking or He likes the late people sometimes going out with me from the other street. And of course that, you know, then my mind said, no, oh, he makes everybody stop what he's doing, and you know, and I started <laughs> grumbling and complaining, and then, uh, and then eventually lay people started bringing him uh, betel nut, and they make this very nice, you know, fresh betel nut, and with uh, all the condiments with it, and bring it to him, well, he, you know, after he's given a talk in the cellar. And a lot of the monks wanted to stop it, and, and you know he shouldn't be doing this. But then, uh, but then he, but then Ajahn Jan, his senior disciple, 
he was there one day, and then the monks were complaining about it and Chao Chui and Beetle that we should stop the lay people from giving it to him. <laughs> and Lung Po John just said, Look, let him chew Beetle now. <laughs> <laughs> and he said it in such a nice way, I thought, that's a nicer frame of mind than we've got to stop him, you know, it's not right, and getting all righteous about it. And like, that's what I was doing, you know getting very righteous. But then when, when you look at your mind, you know, that's not a very pleasant mental state. You know, it's painful to be righteous and then trying to control everybody mm. and and then thinking, I've got to stop Ajahn Chah from doing this. Mm. And so, <clears throat> you know, I never, I, I could see Ajahn Chah was, wasn't particularly interested in himself. But he was interested in stopping the pe lay people giving cigarettes, spending money giving cigarettes to monks, and uh, both for you know the lay people and the health of the monks. Yeah. So, uh, fair enough. For a long time, there must have been uh, there weren't many monasteries in Thailand probably that didn't do smoking or needle nut. They all, in the Isan, everybody did. Yeah. All of them, Bufan and Muntabuas. Yeah. And they talk, give Dasonas with a mouthful of this, you know that? Yeah. <laughs> did you ever try it yourself, Muntabuas? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I, I, I found it repulsive habit yeah. at first, but mm. because I was always uh, invited to these Katina things and and, uh, and 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 then you'd go to these branch monasteries and everybody be having a good time except me. <laughs> so I thought maybe I should learn to chew beetle nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I tried, but I never liked it. I just never. Yeah, we're up in Chiang Mai. The, the way that they're always offering cigarettes and beetle nuts and, and all the stuff that monks and there's. There's one monk where I'm at who, who smokes and will chew people on that, but most don't, and so there's kind of the throwing it away, which is kind of sad, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, when I came, you know, the smoking was... Everybody smoked, I mean, you know, like my generation in the States, we all smoked. It was, you smoked, you took it for granted. <laughs> he didn't question. And they had, you know, Ronald Reagan advertised Chesterfield cigarettes on the TV. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they still on YouTube have commercials of Ronald Reagan. <laughs> so, um, Paul, would you remember of how Lung Cha would interact with the the Kuba Ajahn's when he'd go to see. <clears throat> yeah, he... Well, he, he seemed to, you know, like... Because he was Mahanikai, mm -hmm. but they... You know, Ajahn Mahabur thinks the world, they used to think the world of Ajahn Chah. Yeah. Because Ajahn Chah, like, uh, because Ajahn Chah did establish the, the kind of core what of Ajahn Man and yeah. the Tamayu style. Yeah. And some didn't really care about that, you know, so you could, <coughs> like in, uh, in Nongkai, uh, Lung Po Juan. Lung Po He, I went there, Putok, in the, uh, he, he didn't, you know, he, did, he, he wanted me to attend party milk and everything. Mm -hmm. And then you... And at first, I didn't seem to care, but then I think the, uh, the, the Bangkok seniority oh, uh, kind mm -hmm. of made it necessary. Oh, I see. To, uh, so then you get... You know, you, you would have to sit at the end of the line, things like that. Lumpur Ban never seemed to hold to it. Yeah. 
these days, anyway, when I was there five years ago, when Pope Ben has you sit outside of Hatapasa, but inside the Sima. With? But during the Padmo Cup. No, <coughs> right with the. Oh. Right in the Sangha. Oh, God. Well, it's good practice because you, you know, you, you know, your mind go, you know, the army line is even better than yours, kind of thing. <laughs> you can have fun. You know, mine is more like my personality presents that kind of discrimination. But the whole point, you know, is to observe what suffering is. Not to make things into problems, you know, because then you, you get it, why not? I, you know, I'm not a member of the group, I'm not in the Sangwasa, there's no point in me, you know, being there at all, you know, because of Panimoka is about, you know, the monks you, you live with, not guests. Or like a different Sangwasa. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so then when you look at it in a different way, it's all right. If you look at it in like, oh, they think they're better than we are, then it's not all right. <laughs> this is where you get to know your own mind, you know, how you react to life and praise and blame, being discriminated against or being included in other in the, the whole point of the practice is to be the in this state of mindfulness rather than just trying to make the world right you know complain about it when it when it doesn't seem right <laughs> completely different to have the opportunity to live with some, some people like like Ajahn Chah. It's, we are following his teaching until yeah. today and so uh, it seems like uh, we are always talking about the, the old times and the this and the I don't know, I think it's something really amazing to have this opportunity but, actually, you know, it's good, but you actually have the teaching and the, you know, the, when the Buddha was passing on, he said, I give you the, the when the, Ananda said, what do we do without our teacher? Do I leave you the Dhamma Vinaya? And so, that's significant. But the thing about a living teacher is that it, it's so easy for us to see it as kind of as historical and and uh, you know you, you actually and you can kind of and be impressed with the Buddha, the historical Buddha and scriptures and all that but then you and then a lot of self doubt, you know, and and then we, we tend to make judgments about other teachers and monks from our own deluded mind state, so, you know, I found, you know, I, I wasn't really looking for a teacher, but I was looking for solitude, I just wanted to be out of the society, and but then I did eventually, you know, the first year as a summoner, and then meeting Ajahn Chah. And, but it just happened, it wasn't like I was looking for that. So, 
you know, it's, it's just learning to use what you have, really, what's available. Because you, you know, so you can learn from, from life itself. So I can, you know, I've lived with, like, you know, Pachan and I, you know, lived in branch monasteries where the head monk, I didn't didn't really like and didn't admire very much, and but then I learned from that, you know, about because you you're always comparing somebody the others with Ajahn Chah. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know you can observe it, you're learning from the way things are. Not, I think I have to have a, the best teacher in order to really develop because. Uh, you know, I know people that do that, and they, they never find one. You know, even when they find one, it ends up with some kind of dis disillusionment. Because, uh. well, you know, you can create a perfect teacher in your mind. It's like a marble statue, a Greek god or something, that's perfect proportions and beautiful to look at. But uh, that's all an ideal teacher is. It's just a... You know, an idea doesn't have any nerve endings, doesn't have blood in it, doesn't feel anything. It, you know, marble statue of, of the Buddha, you know, you can swear and throw tomatoes at it and, and the, the Buddha Rupa just, just sits there. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do that to... Uh, to a, a living Buddhist monk, then they different. <laughs> 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 um, uh, had you said in your early years you, you had some disillusionment or doubts about Lampacha? Yeah, I mean, because you, you know, you, you, you know, you tend to expect, you, you form, you know, what you want. I could see how I wanted Lampacha to be. And you know how how I wanted him to fit my ideal, and and he didn't. He wasn't ideal. He but he was, but that was what I needed to be to learn about being human and not seek seek for perfection, because I can create the ideal of it, but to awaken to the realities of change, condition, phenomena, changing. Praise and blame and happiness and suffering and the, the, this whole realm that we have to endure in this form is not ideal realm. It's like this. <laughs> Being a human being is like this. You know, we each have our own karma to to live with. That's why you learn not to be so critical of others when you when you recognize it. That each one of us has to work out our karma. It's not, it's not the same for everyone. And some people have, you know, strange personalities or different, you know, attitudes or whatever. And, and we can, and you can, you know, if you're judging it from your condition mind, you can be very critical and <coughs> dismissive. But when you think it's giving people an opportunity, like you're here now, to work out your karma, so you, you're kind of submitting yourself to a common form, you know, the, like the Pokhau form or the Manat Piku form. So, I mean, that that's a conventional form we agree to, but you're going, you know, each one of you is going to have different emotional reactions and problems and obsessions and things that come up that sometimes we, we don't share it, you, know, it, it's, it's, you know I've seen in my own life you know monks or nuns just have all kinds of problems that I don't understand you know, I mean, what's the problem <laughs> 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 but they're very real for that person can I deny that you know is my am I the standard of how the people should be you know now that's conceit isn't it if they don't react like me, there's something wrong with them. It's, <laughs> it's like you learned uh, 
to respect the, the people's attempts to, to work out their karma, no matter what it is. In England, there's a Mark, English Mark, very eccentric character, and uh, and I got, you know, I kept thinking he shouldn't be the way he is, and uh, I never said this to him, but I mean, he's a very sensitive kind of person, so he he picked up this, and he developed a great aversion to me, he became very hostile to me personally and then then I he maybe he's, he's just over the top and you know I was blaming him for this problem and and he he so, so, such a kind of individual eccentric that a lot of people didn't didn't like him and things like this so you know you could even find support for your own mm. <laughs> and, and so I and then suddenly, I saw what I was doing. You know, I was, I was saying, you know, in my mind, I never said this to him, but I was saying, I don't want you to be the way you are. I want you to be the way I think you should be. <laughs> and I thought, no, no, he, he's, I just accept him as, as the way he is and, and not try to change him or that. I mean, he was a good monk. He wasn't like he was breaking rules or doing anything bad. Just very odd reactions to things. And uh, and when I saw that, then he kind of our relationship changed. Became very good friends. So that was. He's still in rules. Yeah. So it, I mean, it, 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 I was the one that was wrong, rather than him. You know, I'm the head monk there. I'm supposed to, you know. And then, but then I was, I was seeing him as that he should change his ways. And then I realized, no, the problem is with me. <laughs> one point, I must talk about perfect teacher, but reading stories about disciples of Ajahn Chah, they say sometimes it was very hard. For example, in the book, uh, Venerable Father, uh, who later says, and Ajahn Chah is still oh, this monk, he don't know how to practice. He used, uh, his method sometimes it was very, very hard. It's not just easy, oh, it's a very nice teacher. And how was to, to, to live with this, this, this kind of things sometimes? I, I developed uh, a lot of trust in Ajahn Chah immediately, really. So, I, I, you know, even though I could doubt some of the things, and, and I could get angry with him and things like this, because, but uh, the, the, what he was always getting me to do was look at in my mind. So, and I could do that. So sometimes, and it worked because, uh, well, I did trust him, so I didn't, you know, I never, even though I had doubts and, and anger, uh, I never really mistrusted Ajahn Shah. <laughs> even when you caught him smoking? <laughs> well, I mean, I was disappointed <laughs> and uh, I mean, you shouldn't be doing that, but, but I could be aware of that, you know, like a reaction. Uh, like a my personal reaction to that, and then I appreciated you know the training because I didn't you know I didn't you know foreigner coming into Isan monastery you don't know anything you know and you just you know don't know the language or what the people are like or that you just have you know you have an interest in it all, but you have to deal with so many unknown things, and 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 when you you're in a state of state like that, your mind goes can really get 
weird, you know, I can get paranoid and suspicious and of things because I didn't understand, you know, what they were saying. You know. Then sometimes my mind would create kind of paranoid delusions around it. And, but because of the directness of Rumpa Chai, I could actually, you know, not get believe my own emotional reaction. <laughs>